Hey everyone, this is Travis here. Hi uh, Alex. And tonight we're going to do a informal Q and A. And the topic for this evening's conversation is going to be how is ProNav different than the iPilot or iPilot Link? It's a question we get all the time, so we wanted to do a segment here, give you guys a chance to address those questions directly to us, and uh, we'll talk about some of the different systems out there. And hopefully, uh, by the end of this, you'll know a little bit more. Yeah. So, I mean, what what exactly? do these systems do for people? That's one thing a lot of people don't understand. What's the need for an iPilot or a ProNav uh, as compared to just the basic trolling motor? Sure, absolutely. So to start out really basic, what it, a GPS autopilot basically means that we're adding a GPS unit to your trolling motor and all these different systems, the iPilot, the iPilot Link, ProNav, Motor Guide, Pinpoint, our GPS systems, different systems, that basically give your motor the ability to receive signal from the satellites and position your boat using that continuous signal. So one of the things we'd like to talk about to start out is how do all these systems differ? Are there different levels of systems and functionalities? And basically, you know, as we look across that price point and functionality, you know, what, what are these products actually doing? So let's start out with the real basics. So a guy has a foot pedal trolling motor. Um, the first level of upgrade to that trolling motor is what? Right here, just your basic co-pilot remote. Uh, this is for the Minn Kota series trolling motors. Uh, this is basically just your left and right, uh, speed up, slow down, start and stop. Uh, no routes, no real functionality outside of just a manual control that uh, is outside of the foot pedal. Exactly. So basically you get your manual functions, you have no GPS, you have no compass pieces in there. So then the next level, um, some people have a trolling motor that is called the autopilot. Um, and Coda has the power drive series autopilots. It was really popular back in the early 2000s um, because that was really the first system that took some of that manual control away from you so that you could spend more time driving your boat or fishing rather than driving your boat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so moving up, I mean, there, it seems like there's more and more uh, names and products coming on. Um, so there's Motor Guide and Minn Kota. What, is, what are these two remotes for, the iPilot and the uh, Pinpoint series? What's the big differences there? Right. So basically, you know, from the autopilot, what you get is the Makota autopilot was just an electric magnetic compass. Right. And that's just strictly controlling the heading direction of your motor. So now, when we move up to the next level, Makota's got a product called iPilot, and that's just the basic iPilot. And what you get is a GPS that installs in the head of the trolling motor, and you get this remote control system. So the Equivalent parallel to that then for a motor guide is the pinpoint GPS system. Um, what the iPilot and pinpoint systems both do is they're going to give you an anchor function. Some refer to it as spot lock, some refer to it as pinpoint anchor. Uh, we refer to it as anchoring, you know, that's what people are doing. They're using that anchor to keep your boat in one spot. Now, across the board, these systems all perform pretty darn similar. Um, you know, you'll hear the manufacturers claim, you know, certain levels of accuracy, but here's the realistic situation. You're out in the, you know, out in the water, you're fishing, you've got, say, a one or two foot chop, you've got 10 mile an hour winds. All of these systems are going to keep your boat pointed, first of all, into the wind. So you can't really control the orientation of your boat. You know, that's going to be into the wind. Um, if you're fishing a situation where you don't have a lot of wind, basically we're dealing with current, we're dealing with, uh, you know, drift, and if there's not a lot of wind prevailing that's blowing your hull around, then these systems are going to point you into the current. Now, if we have a situation such as Detroit River where we've got current and wind, you're going to find that your boat kind of points somewhere in between, depending on which of these forces is a little bit stronger. And uh, of course, you know, there's really no way to steer the back of your boat because these motors are up on the front. So that's what the GPS anchor systems do using any one of these products for your trolling motor. They're all gonna hold you within about a 10 to 15 foot bubble most of the time. You get hit with a big wind gust, you're gonna get a little bit off and that motor's gonna compensate and basically bring you right back to the spot. So that GPS knows the set point where you hit the anchor button and essentially it's calculating as you drift off how to get you back to that point. Right, so 
one big thing that I see questions about every day is installing these things into your motors. If I just have a basic motor, how do I install this as compared to something like the ProNav? So I know the ProNav is just a plug and play system. That just plug, plugs right into where your foot pedal would go, plugs into a power source, runs up and just clamps right onto the shaft of the motor. Takes the install videos take 15 minutes. I mean, I set my first one up in 15, 20 minutes going through YouTube videos. What is the difference between setting this up as compared to trying to install an iPilot after? Sure. So yeah, that is a great question. With the iPilot and the Pinpoint systems, both of those systems are available as an add-on to your existing motor if you purchase one without it. Um, also, both of those systems can be purchased integrated with the motor. So when you're adding that on, basically the process to add it on to a motor that has just the foot pedal or a co-pilot and no GPS brains, you're basically going to pull the top cover off of this motor here and you're essentially going to install the compass portion and down below here is a control board that basically uh, is where your foot pedal plugs in essentially and the iPilot system and the pinpoint are going to replace that control board with their specific boards that can work through their remote control system. And then of course they're pulling in GPS just like ProNav to basically position you. Right. Yeah, so I guess uh, the next real step is to dive into some of the features that these have. Uh, you hit a little bit on the anchoring. Uh, for guys like myself who are constantly trolling, I like to be able to see my route. I like to be able to know where I'm going on a map. Does ProNav integrate with any chart plotters outside of your phone? That seems right. to be a common question. That's a common question. So basically, between ProNav, the basic iPilot, and the pinpoint system for motor guide, out of those three systems, um, ProNav, of course, works through the mobile app, so you're always facing a map, and you're always seeing exactly where you're at in real time. Mm -hmm. With the oh. basic iPilot remote, what you're getting, in addition to that GPS module that you install in the motor, is literally your remote control. So you're going to hold that in your hand, you're not looking at a map, you know, you can point it left, you know, turn the motor right, and you can hit that anchor button, or hit the vector or heading lock feature to basically keep you going straight. So you're not actually able, with the Vincota iPilot, to see any of your waypoints or routes on a map. And that's the same for the, gate, uh, or the uh, motor guide pinpoint system. The basic pinpoint system is just going to be a remote control. So we'll show you what these look like. This is the motor guide pinpoint system. And on these remote controls, you've got your manual steering, your speed adjustment. You've got one button here that you can press to anchor. You've got uh, a button here that's gonna basically hold your heading. And that's, that's pretty well the basics. Um, with both of these remotes, they do have a record feature and they have a very limited number of routes that you can store within this remote, um, roughly a half dozen routes. So if I hit the record button, I'm out fishing, I can manually steer you know, and run that track up to about a couple miles and then save it. You know, It's gonna be literally one, two, three, or four. And if I wanna replay that route, I press that button, hit go, and the motor's gonna run it exactly how I ran it. So, if you happen to make a jog, you got a little bit shallow, you got hung up on the bottom with your uh, trolling, um, you know, that's gonna be a problem. Right. But that's features available in both the basic pinpoint and the iPilot remote. Right. And one thing that I've noticed in using the, that kind of a system, I fish more than one lake. So when I'm going from, say, Lake St. Clair to um, just going out on the Keweenaw Bay here, uh, pressing one here, isn't gonna give me the route that I'm looking for. Yet I had to, to have a paper list, mm -hmm. knowing where everything is. How is that different when I save through ProNav? Sure, so basically that is, that's a great question to lead into where the mapping really comes into play here. So with these remotes, you're gonna to have to write down route one is in such and such point on such and such lake, and you gotta know where that's at because when you hit that go button, that motor's gonna take you <laughs> whether or not you buy that route or not. So basically that's where we get into the next level of systems. And ProNav being one of those systems, the iPilot Link being part of that next level of systems, and then the Motor Guide Gateway System. So these three systems are a step above iPilot and Pinpoint. So basically what you're getting then 
is you're getting all the features of your handheld remote. You're getting anchor, you're getting heading lock, but you're also getting the ability to use a map to basically create points for anchoring, create points to follow a route from A to B to C, and also with either of these types of systems, you're gaining the ability to save and store those routes, give them a fancy name, color code them, whatever you want to do. You know, you can basically manage your data on the screen. And uh, the beauty of that is that you can always see right where you're at and in relation to where your boat's parked, you can see, okay, I've got a route here, I've got a route there. If I want to start up on one of those routes, I select it and then my motors are saving me. Right, and um, so when I'm planning these routes, no one likes to wait to plan their route on the river or on the lake. Right. I'm the kind of guy who I think about fishing in the winter, I think about fishing in the spring before ice breaks. I like to plan my routes ahead of time. With uh, ProNav, I can do all of that right now from my couch while I'm watching the Super Bowl. If I want to use like a hummingbird, for example, I'll have to physically go out, be connected, get in my boat, and sit out there in the cold. Right. Chart my routes. <laughs> yeah. No one, no one wants to sit in the garage when it's 10 degrees. Exactly. And snowing. With you. Yeah. So that's yeah. You're right. Basically, one of the the fundamental differences. So when we designed ProNav, one of the things that we realized is that everybody, you know, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people are starting to use mobile devices at home for just about everything, from reading a book to watching the news, streaming the football game. And the beauty is that by using this mobile device for you know all these different things. Let's apply that to fishing. And now you've got one more really great use to basically take this iPad on your couch and you can start thinking about fishing a little bit before you actually get out there. Um, versus the alternative, running an iPilot link system through a Humminbird specifically, um, or running a gateway system, the motor guide system, through a Lowrance chart plotter. You know, as you can see here, this system not powered up because it's inside. So, Basically, when I run these systems, the interface is going to look very similar. You know, we're looking at an avionics lake chart here. We can see our contour lines and one foot intervals. You know, you've got beautiful maps. Same is true for the Humminbird, same is true for the Lowrance. You've got these maps. You can go in and create points and you can navigate from A to B to C. Like you said, the big difference is that with the tablet, with my phone, I can do that anywhere on the go. You know, whether I'm out fishing or whether I'm sitting at home on the couch. Right. Uh, one other thing to point out is um, with the mapping for to get Navionics through the ProNav app, that's a $10 per year subscription. Always updates because it's cloud-based. So when new maps get released, you're going to get that map. Where the alternative is to buy one of these nice little chips here, which are much more expensive. I believe last time I checked, $150 per yep, region. Exactly. Um, and that's just hardwired there. If you want to update it, it's a pain to go through that whole process and to get a new chip. Mm -hmm. So really you have a little bit of cost savings there. What's the cost savings when it comes to having to get the full link system with a hummingbird? Well, Say, sure. <laughs> if I run a Garmin, can I run the link system? Right, so basically you touched on a great point. The Makota motors are currently only compatible with hummingbird chart plotters. And not every hummingbird chart plotter is compatible. You know, they've got a you know pretty extensive list on their website. But you know, to run this type of system where you're using the maps and basically creating the points, you're gonna be doing that on a seven to nine inch screen or bigger. And now we're talking a price point of you know seven or eight hundred dollars on up to you know in excess of two to three thousand. Um, you know, Hummingbird's got some great units. Uh, some of their touchscreen units in a larger series are very convenient to use. Um, but we're talking, you know, a significant investment beyond just purchasing the motor with the iPilot link system. Right. Now with ProNav, our features are basically mirroring that, doing so right on the mobile device. You've got your iPad, you've got your free ProNav app, you've got your $10 Navionics subscription, and you've got the hardware here that does everything the system will. So if you're starting from scratch, putting this all together, you know, for an iPilot link system, you're talking at the very minimum, you know, beyond your trolling motor, you're talking $1,500 at least to get your chart plotter, uh, your Navionics card, and your GPS components. ProNav, $699. Right. Uh, one other thing just to hit on. So if I was to be fishing with a friend and they were running a ProNav unit, how easy is it to bring my maps and my charts 
through my with my safety routes over to their boat. Can I share that route? Right, absolutely. So that is one of the neat features because we are on a mobile device, everybody's connected. You know, if you have buddies that you trust and you like, you can sync your data with them. But you know, even more useful, this is what I find myself doing more than sharing with other people, is I've got a, an Android phone, I've got an iPad, I've got a bunch of different devices. I use my phone in the boat a lot because it's convenient, it's easy, I've got it with me. You know, I will take my tablet out in the boat. Um, we've got a great system with a light, -proof, a light proof case on it, so it's 100% waterproof. And I'll leave that tied right into my console on the dash of the boat, just like your chart plotter would be. Um, the beauty is, for myself, I can sync all my routes and waypoints from one to the other wirelessly. And that's nice. You know, the alternative with these types of systems, um, you know, you're dealing with SD cards, you're dealing with waypoints that are in different file formats from one to the other, and it, it's just a, a major you know, pain and hassle. And most people really don't end up doing that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do, if we don't have any questions yet, I guess we can walk through making a route and uh, sure. yeah. having that process on the water. Yeah, you bet. Well, let's just recap really quick, um, you know, just for everybody tuning in here. Yeah. So basically, you know, the key points here are that there are multiple levels of autopilot that you can add onto your trolling motor. So the very basic uh, level of upgrading over a foot pedal motor is going to be your handheld co-pilot style remote. You're getting left, right, speed up, speed down. No GPS, no compass. So that next level would be considered the, uh, for example, the Minn Kota autopilot. You're getting, it, getting the electromagnetic compass in the head of that motor and you can basically use that to set that heading lock. So, you know, I point my motor that way and it's gonna maintain that, making little adjustments along the way based on the compass. So that's the next level. The next level beyond that is really what we're talking about tonight, GPS systems. So as an example, we've got ProNav, we've got the iPilot system, and we've got the Pinpoint system. So these three systems all have a GPS in addition to that electromagnetic compass. They're able to anchor your boat, they're able to do the heading lock, and they're basically able to offer you all the manual controls in the handheld remote. Um, the big difference is that iPilot and Pinpoint are strictly a remote control system. You get your handheld remote. Um, iPilot, there is an LCD display that does give you a little bit of visibility as to what that motor is doing. We can see your prop uh, speed and setting there. Um, that's pretty handy. Uh, of course, the motor guide system, you've also got the remote control here. Um, their interface uh, has some you know, different audio tones, but does not have the screen display. So you lose that ability to basically see what thrust setting you're at or what miles per hour you're running. And, and basically then, the third or you know, final level of autopilot system are gonna be your iPilot link, your motor guide, motor guide gateway. Um, the link is gonna go through a Humminbird chart plotter. The gateway is gonna go through a LaRange chart plotter. And what those systems do is basically tie in GPS and maps. So you can see where you're at, you can select a point on the map where you wanna be, and you can say, go to, and that motor's gonna take you there. Automatically, you don't have to touch it. That's awesome, you know, that frees yeah. you up so you can have a whole bunch of hands-free time fishing. Yeah, uh, one thing I don't think we hit on yet, there are a lot of bass fishermen out there who like to use their foot pedal who like to have the ability to go back and just quickly hit that foot pedal. Can these systems do that currently? Right, so yeah, each of these systems is a little bit different. Um, you know, for example, on a power drag motor, when you add a link system to it, you actually lose the ability to run a foot pedal through that motor. Now, not all of their systems are that way, but as an example, you know, that's, that's a popular yeah. one. Pronav works on the power drag motors. And we have ensured that you will be able to keep your foot pedal specifically because that's certainly nice for that manual control. In addition, if you already have a co-pilot remote for your motor, you can still use that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's uh, definitely a question that comes up pretty frequently sure. uh, through uh, all the trade shows and you bet. a lot of bass fishermen like that functionality. Right. So one, one last thing I guess we haven't really touched on here, and before we turn it over to a full q and I would just like to highlight uh, the ProNet remote. So basically, if some of you have heard that have tuned into our channels and followed us, uh, we have our own handheld controller that is going to be a companion for the mobile app working alongside with ProNet. 
So from the push of a button, we've got all of our manual controls, you've got anchoring, you've got the heading lock, and we've got a couple other really cool features baked in here that folks will learn more about soon. Um, you know, one of my favorites, as simple as it is, is that I can hit the mark button and save a waypoint right onto my tablet from anywhere in the boat. So just to give you a couple examples, this system basically, you know, takes the, uh, the, the ProNav system, the mobile app gives you all the maps, the ProNav's giving you the GPS, the remote's giving you the manual basic controls, and it's giving you all the functionality of that iPilot link of that motor guide gateway system through your Lorans or Hummingbirds, you know, at a fraction of the price. Right. So, with that said, hopefully we've kind of debunked or clarified, I guess, some of the uh, questions that we frequently get pertaining to how does ProNav differ from an iPilot or an iPilot link, for example. Um, we would like to focus the rest of our time tonight on basically a Q&A, make this as conversational as we can with the folks that are watching, and uh, get your, your feedback and thoughts here. So I'm sure there's some points that we failed to touch on, and we'd love to hear from you guys now. Any questions coming in? All right. Well, is there anything else you'd like to touch on, Alex? Um, the last thing that I think we missed out on was um, if I wanted to send my boat to an anchoring point. Sure. Is that possible? Oh, sure, absolutely. So the go-to anchor feature, um, basically that's one that I use a lot up here in Lake Superior. You know, we're fishing offshore structures for lake trout and salmon. Um, and primarily when we're fishing lake trout, you know, we have a reef structure that might come up out of really deep water. And I'll have a waypoint saved on top of that reef. Um, it's a place I've caught fish before. It's a place that we've marked fish, that type of thing. And when I, when I have those points saved, I can rip out to that reef. I can literally select that waypoint and I hit go to. So if I'm coming in, I just come off plane, drop the trolling motor in the water, and now I'm say a quarter mile from where I wanna fish. I wanna use that electric motor to just kinda of sneak in there and get parked. I drop that motor in, I hit go to, the motor ramps up, you can set your speed over there, and once it gets to that point, it's gonna anchor you right on top of it. So, you know, you can imagine there's a million other scenarios where you could use that type of feature. That's one thing you don't get with just a handheld remote. That's one of the beauties of actually having that map to be able to click that point. You know exactly which waypoint it is. You caught a bunch of fish there last weekend. You want to get right back on that spot. Looks like we've got a couple questions rolling in here. When will the new motors be compatible, like the Altera, and then another person has the Taroba? Sure. As well. Yeah, great. So we, we've been actually working here on our own control board for these trolling motors. And we have basically what we call a universal control board in the works. And our goal is to make this available. Um, we're gonna do some testing on it. We wanna make sure this works really good. So before we make it available to everybody, you know, we're gonna spend a lot of time in the summer running it here. Um, we are actively recruiting beta testers. And if you happen to have a Taroba or say you have an XI-5 motor, um, we would like you to contact us if you're interested in being one of the first folks out there using this new control board. And what that uh, control board is going to do is it's going to allow you to upgrade your motor so that you can run the ProNav system. And the way our beta program works, is we're going to give you that extra hardware for that uh, newer motor for free. And in exchange, what we're looking for is just basically good feedback. We want a direct line of communication with you. Um, and, you know, understanding it's a beta product, we're testing it still and getting all the bugs worked out. You know, we don't want uh, to give anyone the false impression that this is a finished product, but, you know, we're doing all of our own testing here to make sure that when it gets out to beta, it's going to be pretty darn rock solid. So if you're interested in that program, please contact us. Uh, you can send an email directly to sales or info at pronamarine.com. Just put in the subject line beta testing uh, or something to that effect, and we'd love to get you involved in that program um, starting as soon as we have open water here. Do you offer Pronav unit and motor package together? Yeah, great. So we do. Um, if you take a look on our website, we do have bundles where we have the trolling motor and Pronav all bundled up. Uh, right now we offer those packages all the way from 45 pound thrust up to 70 pound thrust. Those are 12 volt and then the bigger ones are 24 volt systems. And basically we can put that package together, ship it directly to you. Um, we have pretty quick shipping, you know, our 
our shipping is free on the ProNav units and the motors typically come within a week. Um, you know, so as you're kind of gearing up for open water, um, you know, we would love to get you guys set up and fishing. We also have all the accessories, the brackets, the um, circuit breakers, there's a 40 amp inline breaker that we run with most of our motors, um, you know, the, the different mounting provisions for the motor on the boat. So if you got any questions, we'd love to talk trolling motors, we'd love to talk getting a boat set up, you know, from scratch. Um, certainly give us a give us a show and we would love to work with you on that. Any other questions folks? Awesome. Anything come to mind, Alex, that you'd yeah. like to... One last thing I'd just like to touch on is just because you have an older motor, an older power drive, doesn't mean it's not a compatible motor. Uh, we have a board that we can easily switch out. There's a five minute YouTube video we can get you to see that process. Uh, a lot of times that's a big cost savings because you don't necessarily want to go out and buy a new motor every time something new comes out. This is a great way to upgrade your current system, test out our product, and really get that autopilot in your hands at a very, very reasonable price. Yeah, that's a great point. And uh, maybe a final point there, you know, we, we tell folks this, and I don't think it really sinks in, but we offer a one year satisfaction guarantee, which means that we really want happy customers. And we have a lot of confidence in our product and our customer support. And the reason we offer a one year satisfaction guarantee is so that when you purchase our product, you have that confidence of buying it, knowing that if for any reason you're not happy with it, you're not getting the support you want, you know, we'll give you a full year, change your mind, and return it to us uh, for money back. So you know, that's, that's kind of a unique thing that most companies do not do in this line of work. So we have a couple more questions coming in. This one is, I know it's a long shot, but anything coming down the pipe for a new Water Snake brand trolley motors from Amazon? Ah, uh, <laughs> sure. Um, you know, I can't specifically say whether or not our board would be compatible with that, but it is something we can look into. Um, if you want to drop us a, uh, an email with that question, it's something we can pass along to our development team. And, you know, if there's any possibility that that might work, we would love to let you know. So. And do you have plans to interface this system with sonar. Mm, right. So we do get that question a lot. So let me just kind of describe where we started with this project. The, the real big thing when we developed the ProNav system was to break the need to link your GPS and your motor to a chart plotter. And that was to basically eliminate the additional expense of having to purchase a compatible chart plotter. Now with that said, we, we certainly get a lot of questions about linking it into a sonar. Um, as of today, we do not interface at all with uh, a sonar or other chart plotter devices. Um, but, you know, we do have folks from time to time that are looking to just create their waypoints on their fish finder and maybe use those on the ProNav system. Now that is something that we're looking into, um, you know, maybe different ways to make it easy to, to get your waypoints off your, your sonar device and pull them in, you know, use them in ProNav and send those to your motor. Uh, we don't have anything that we'll be releasing immediately here this spring for that, but certainly, you know, we've, we've heard that question and it's something that we would love to figure out a solution for. Um, I will mention that there are a couple of really good sonar options that we have come across that work through your uh, phone or iPad. So, Sonar Phone is a product that's manufactured by Vexlar, and they actually have a transducer that you can use right on your boat. It's a transom mounted sonar. And that unit will basically, uh, over Wi-Fi, basically connects up to your phone and gives you, you know, that live stream of what's down below. It's a 2D sonar, it doesn't have side scan or down scan, but it actually produces a beautiful full color graph, uh, water temperature included. Um, I've used that quite a bit. I've had really good results with it. Um, we've used it out in water as deep as a couple hundred feet and it will still pick up fish and the bottom. So, you know, I've been pretty impressed with that. Um, there are a couple other sonar uh, manufacturers that do the wireless sonars, um, such as Deeper, that's becoming a really popular one. And, you know, a lot of our customers, uh, they embrace that, the mobile connected device. You know, they're using this as their central hub, and then they're adding on the attachments. So, I know that's not, you know, exactly the answer what, what we were looking here with the question, but it is something I wanted to mention for folks that are thinking through that equation of, you know, I want to have sonar on the boat, I want to have a GPS motor, you know, what are my options? Just keep in mind that uh, there are some of these wireless sonar options and uh, the price point on the Vexlar one is right around $150. So 
If you compare that to purchasing even an entry level uh, five inch screen, you know, for like a Humminbird, uh, you know, Helix five series, you're talking you know, maybe right around three, $400. Um, you know, the Garmin Striker series with the four or five inch screen, you're talking similar price point. So it's an option we just want to bring to people's attention, but we certainly are looking into also the ability to basically take some of your waypoints and data off of, you know, say a Garmin or whatever it might be and use those with ProNav. So stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. I think you hit a great point too. Um, for people who don't have hummingbirds, a lot of those people are kayakers, people who have small kayaks or even small boats. This is a great product for people with kayaks because you can just pull it up on your phone. You don't have to have some sort of system planted right in front of you that gets in the way of paddling or whatever you, however you like to move around. Uh, this is just a great way to have a trolling motor on the front of your boat for when you're at your fishing destination to keep you anchored, to be able to move you around and navigate the river, uh, fight the current for you so you can actually fish and not have to worry about kayaking 100% of the time. Yeah, great point, absolutely. Any other questions? These are all great. Is the Trova part of the beta testing? Yep, if you have the Trova, please do send us an email. We would love to get you uh, involved with our beta testing on that on that motor, so. Awesome. Well, we'd like to do a drawing for a couple of hats. Um, so I think if you want to pick through a couple names there, we really appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. And again, thank you. This is our second Facebook Live question and answer um, session. Uh, I think we did a fairly good job of keeping it a little briefer than the last one. So that was some of the feedback we got last time. It's kind of make it a concise uh, format. But certainly if you guys have any feedback on how this went, uh, things you'd like to see in the future, um, topics, or even, you know, specific features or in-depth looks that you know you really want to get uh, with the ProNav system uh, please by all means leave us some comments uh, below to kind of give us that that feedback and suggestions so that we can incorporate those down the road um, we hope this has been a helpful event and we're looking forward to continuing them uh, roughly on a monthly schedule um, we can certainly do it more frequently if we're getting good participation like we have been All right, just looking for a couple names here. Stay tuned. Yep, well, we're just looking out of the comments there. So it looks like Nick Kaiser. Awesome. And Ronald Racine Jr. Awesome, Ron and Nick, congratulations. Uh, we've got a couple of hats for you. If you just wanna leave us a Facebook message to the ProNav page uh, with a good shipping address, um, that would be perfect. We'll get these hats right over to you. So, any other questions before we depart? Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. Hope you have a great night. Tight lines.